Today we're doing a simple steel stringer stair where you can obviously adjust a lot of the parameters parametrically and they'll update in Revit through Dynamo. You can see that they just stack on top of each other and join up so you can quickly create a steel stair through any building and adjust the levels as you go for the different floor heights. And a reminder that you can get more tutorials like this at our website and you can also download the scripts if you prefer rather than building them yourself from the videos and feel free to have a look at some of the other services we offer including model conversion, reinforcement, visualizations etc. Okay so starting off with Revit on the left and Dynamo on the right and remember Dynamo is under manage visual programming. So the first thing we're going to do is get some levels. Now you'll notice in Revit that I've set up three levels already because we're going to reference them. So I'm going to select one of them which is base. So I want my stair to go to, from base and I'm just going to copy and paste this and go to level one. So stair from base to level one. Next thing I'm going to do is get the elevation of the level for both of them. Copy paste. So this will give me zero and almost three and a half meters. Now the next thing I want to do is get a half landing height. So you can do this a few ways, but um, I'm just going to have it halfway up. <clears throat> so I'm just going to have a little formula, which is x minus y over 2. So that's just the average of the two inputs. And I'm just putting this in a code block. You can do this with components, but just remember to put the semicolon at the end. And it will give you x and y. So that gives me 1750, just halfway between. And I want to start with my first point of the stringer of the stair. Defaults to zero, 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 but I know, in fact, I'm gonna keep that there like that for the moment. But no, sorry, what I need is the base, the base Z I'm gonna put in there. So if we select, if we go start going up the levels, it'll know where, <clears throat> which Z to start with. Obviously I'm starting an X and Y zero, but you can change that quite easily. Okay, so those are two inputs. We need some other inputs. One is gonna be the landing depth. It's gonna be an integer slider. I'm just gonna rename it. Landing depth. I'm going to make that go up to about three meters. I'm going to copy and paste this, call this stair length. In X. Copy and paste. And I'll call a stair width. Stair length I'll make a bit higher, say 10 meters. And stair width, I'll make that about 5 meters max. So that's all the inputs we need. So we've got our first point also, and first thing I need to do is start drawing the bottom landing. 
So I'm just going to use vector by coordinates. And I want my I want the vector to move by the landing depth in x direction. And I'll make landing depth about two meters, say roughly. So that's one. Copy and paste that. Um, I need the vector for the stair length, which is going to be similar in the x direction, and copy paste stair width, which is going to be in the y direction. adjust these give them some reasonable numbers okay so I'm going to start drawing the first stringer of the st stair now so we've got the first point you can see it there I want to draw the next one which is going to be the landing depth along so you can see it in Revit there I'll just zoom in a little bit and I'll zoom to fit in Dynamo you can see what we're doing although it might zoom out a little bit as well okay that's the first point and then it will start cranking up so I want to get this point which is there and translate it so it's this point and translate it by our stair length x now I actually want it to so the stair is going to go along straight and then kick up so I need it to kick up as well so I already know that I've calculated that half landing height so if I put that into the Z of this vector and I need to make that negative so I'll just put a negative in front of that hard to visualize at the moment but if I just keep going we can start drawing the stringer so then my next point along the stringer will be the next half landing horizontal piece so again I'm going to take this point which I've just made and continue it along by the landing depth <coughs> which I've already got a vector for so now I can draw these lines. So, whoops. If I go line by start and end point, I've got my first point, second point. You can see this in Revit as well. Copy paste. Next point, next point. Copy paste. Next point, next point. So you can sort of see our stair stringer. Like that. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is draw some lines. Uh, in the y direction which will be the members going the other way so to do that I'm first going to collect these points that I've already drawn the one two three four points 
into a list. There's obviously a lot of ways to do this. I could do this. I can think of other ways of doing this already off the top of my head, but this one's just pretty simple. So I've now got a list of four points, and you can see them highlighted in Dynamo. There they are. And I want to translate them by the stair width and then make them into lines. So again, translate <coughs> geometry by vector. We've got the geometry of the, which are the dots, the vector we've already worked out. And then we can just draw lines. Start point, end point. Okay. Starting to look a little bit more like a stair. Now, the next thing I'm going to create the other stringer on the first flight of stair steps. So, to do that, I'm just going to mirror one of the stringers I've already got. So to do that, I first need a halfway point to mirror about. So I am going to just say x on 2 for the stair width. And just control copy paste, make that into a vector. Then, just to adjust it a little bit, because I don't want the next stringer to be exactly in the middle, I wanted to pull it back a bit so that the steel members don't clash. So I'm going to create another vector by coordinates. Let's put a code block of, and say, minus 200 in the Y. So this is just pulling it back 200 mil, and then use vector add. So I've got my first vector and my 200 mil change to pull it back. So I've got a something to translate my next stringer across by, and again. My direction and the line that I want to copy is this one. So there we've got our next stringer. Two stringers on either side of the steps going up to the half landing. Then the next thing is I want to collect all of these lines, this one stringer as a list because I'm going to mirror and flip it to create the other side of the stair rather than drawing it all manually. It's a much quicker way of doing it. So I'll have four lines I'll, which I've already drawn. This line, stringer coming up, and I also want this other stringer that I've just made. So you can see that highlighted in blue there. <clears throat> I want to flip and mirror that to create the next flight of stairs from the half landing up. So to do that, I'm going to use the geometry.mirror component. My geometry is there. Now I need a plane to mirror it on. 
So to create that, I'm going to use plain by origin normal. And my normal is just going to be the z axis, which just creates a z vector of unit one length. Because initially I'm going to flip it around, mirror it around the z axis. So the origin point I'm going to use is. The last point I created at the top of the stringer. OK, so you can see that's mirrored at about a plane going through the half landing. Now I need to flip mirror that again about halfway through the half landing. So I've got my mirrored geometry here. I'm going to mirror it again. But this time my mirror plane is going to be about a point which is the first point moved over by half the distance of the width of the half landing. You can see it, it's just popped up there. There it is in blue. So that's my new point to mirror it around, but I need, oh sorry, I should be creating a plane here. So that's the origin of my plane, and this time the vector is the y-axis, or the y. y-axis is basically just a unit y vector. So that's my new mirror plane and the geometry I used before. So there we go. Now I'm just going to unpreview this. So there we have a basic stair of one level. Okay, and now we just need to put some steel onto it. So I'm just going to collect my lines that I want to create the steel from. I've got these lines. these lines and these lines so it's all highlighted in blue I'm going to use beam by line by curve structural framing beam by curve I know my curves my level I've already got because it was I selected it ages ago I'm going to use base so for framing type can use structural framing types. It's selecting from a list that's already in Revit. Just to remind people, you have to load those in. If I go to structural framing, I'll use the Australian one here. I'm going to use a PFC. I'm going to use a 200 PFC. And I'll be able to pick that. And there we go. So we've got our framing in. So that's the basics, but you'll probably want to flip some of these members around because they're uh, both all facing in the same direction. So in real life, a stair wants either the toes in or the toes out. So if you want to flip some members around, mirror them around the steel, uh, first thing is I'm going to create a list so that I can grab the items I want. I'm going to use the same list that I made 
the curves. Now if you remember the first item of the old list was these four lines here. And out of them, that's 0, 1, 2, 3. So that one's fine. And that one's fine. But I want to flip that one and that one, which is, that's 1, because that's 0, 1, 2, 3. So I want 1 and 3. So I'll just type that into a code block. And this is just shorthand for a list. 1 and 3 in square brackets, semicolon. <clears throat> then the next, the next list, uh, the next item was this collection here, which is that one, that one, that one, and that one. And if you remember, that's 0, 1, 2. I want them all flipped. I don't want to flip the last one. So for this, I'm just going to create another selection of numbers, which is 0, 1, 2. Oops. 1, comma, 2. And then <clears throat> the very last selection. They're all in the right direction to me because I want toes in, except this one here. And that is, I know, item number three on the mirrored version. So I'm just going to make that three and that's it. So we're making up our list which matches our original list. Then I'm just going to get index, get item by index, because we've we've worked out our indexes. We've got our index list. We're going to select some of this structural framing. Okay, that warning is because we have lists. It's auto hasn't worked out the best way to interpret the two lists I've given it. So I won't go into this now, but if you select longest, it lines the two lists up so that it selects items from in the right order. So these elements we're going to set their cross section and Z justification. make this a string and this is called cross section rotation and the value is going to be 180 degrees and similarly actually I'll just copy that all the other thing we have to set is Z offset value And that will be minus 200 for the depth of the, or just 200 for the depth of the uh, section that we're using, the 200 PFC. See, we, uh, so if you rotate the section, it flips it up. And that's why we need the second one, which sets the Z offset value. So there we are. And you can see all the sections are mired perfectly in Revit, because it's all lined up 100%. 
There you go. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.